Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kaylin Chow. I'm the Director of Membership Services at Alliance for Girls. Let's give it up to Chulita Vinyl Club with some virtual snaps and some chats and reactions. Thank you to Chulita Vinyl Club for spinning today's music. CBC is made up of women, gender non-conforming, non-binary, LGBTQ+, and self-identifying people of color. 
CVC launched in 2014 with the context of providing a safe space for empowerment, togetherness, and to utilize music and vinyl as a form of resistance against the erasure of culture. Each Chulita identifies with their own identity. They are not to be classified as one nationality or culture. Within CVC, they individually identify with the following, Latinx, Tehanex, Chicanex, Afro-Latinx, and many more. The unifying denominator is that they come together over the belief that el disco es cultura, and they believe that is worth preserving and perpetuating. So thanks again to Chilita Vinyl Club. They'll definitely be back for some more music breaks. Um, and we're so excited to be co-hosting today's celebration with the San Francisco Department on the Status of Women, one of the 120 plus organizations who are members of Alliance for Girls. Um, today's celebration is really about all of you, our members, our partners, and of course, the girls and gender expansive youth that are leading us to a brighter future. So before I introduce our next speaker, I just wanted to go over a few key things. Um, please take advantage of the chat function at the bottom, the reaction function to give virtual props to the speakers, and feel free to bring your kids, roommates, pets to your screen, and enjoy some food or drinks while you're participating. We're really here to celebrate and just have fun. Um, and finally, this event is being recorded and we may share some of the recordings of the speakers later on. And so now I'm excited to pass it off to our first speaker, the founding executive director of Alliance for Girls, Emma Mayerson. Emma, take it away. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Kaylin. Thanks so much for that warm introduction. Welcome everyone to this celebration of International Day of the Girl. It is a particularly uh, exciting and important day of the girl today. Um, this is the Our Voice Equal Future uh, Day of the Girl. It's My Voice, Our Equal Future. And I cannot think of a more appropriate theme for this year's Day of the Girl what ties all of Alliance for Girls members together, the more than 100 organizations and more than 200 girls champions and service providers who spend every day working with girls. What ties us together is that we know that girls are inherently valuable. We know that girls are inherently valuable and we know that their voices are what will lead us toward a brighter and more equitable future. That is what makes us Alliance for Girls. And so here we are celebrating the International Day of the Girl with one of our valued and longtime partners, the San Francisco Department on the Status of Women, really recognizing the power of girl voice. Um, and Alliance for Girls founded with our members has been amplifying girl voice uh, since the beginning from having girl speakers at our conferences. I remember the Julia Morgan School for Girls uh, bringing girls to be speakers and moderators. Career Girls has nominated girls to speak at our conferences to our research that is done in partnership with our members. Um, our very first report, Valuing Girls' Voices uh, in 2014. And we have since done four original reports done by girls about the needs of girls of color, enabled through our membership organizations, organizations like About Face, like Girls Inc. of Alameda County, um, Bay War, Rafiki Coalition. We have about 30 organizations now who have actually supported our reports in one way or another through hosting focus groups um, or looking at the analysis. And why do our members do that? Because we know that girls are telling us what they need and all we need to do is listen. And so our members, in addition to doing the programmatic work, to amplify girl voice have gone above and beyond in partnering with Alliance for Girls to create these landmark studies on what girls need and publish them. Our most recent report is called Together We Rise. And that report is what you'll hear the work we've done in the last year to advocate for girls is really based on. And the title of Together We Rise is inspired by 
the Maya Angelou poem, Still I Rise. And I wanna read a little bit of that poem as we start. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides. Just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Do you wanna see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes? Shoulders falling down like teardrops weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Do you take it awful hard? Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air, I'll rise. And it's that poem that our young women researchers embodied and remembered as they created this report the Together We Rise report that has inspired so much collective action from our membership, from our schoolwork, where we have partnered with Oakland Unified School District to create safer spaces for girls, to our advocacy, where we are fighting for the economic security of young mothers. That research has created the framework and the platform through which we have come together as a membership association for girls listen to girls' voices and, en and enabled incredible collective action together. Um, and so I'm so happy to be here today celebrating the International Day of the Girls, celebrating the voices that girls have amplified, have told us their stories and to use those voices and to listen to those voices to compel our collective action. It's such a beautiful topic for this International Day of the Girl. And I'd love to hear from some of the people in the chat. Um, what are you doing to listen to girls? What have you done this year to listen to girls? I know TechBridge, who's on this event, has done amazing work listening to what girls need to be able to succeed in STEM and really hearing from young women that STEM classes aren't enough. If you're not recognizing and confronting and addressing and battling the racism and the sexism and the systemic oppression that girls are feeling, they will not succeed in STEM. And so TechBridge has done an amazing strategic pivot and plan to really embed that in their work. Um, I know that About Face is doing amazing. They're on this call as well. I know About Face is doing amazing work listening to young women and has really changed the way that they do their media literacy program to include understanding of intersectionality and, to, and they've always had that, but deepening that work and deepening the action that they're doing to listen to girls. I know that so many of the organizations on this chat are already doing that work. Um, this event is really to thank you for the work you already do, to thank you for being that one place in a girl's life where her, ver her voice is truly heard and cherished. And to thank you that even as you do that work, you are taking the extra energy, the extra time, the above and beyond to be a part of Alliance for Girls too and work with us to amplify girls' voices through research, to advocate for change, and to strengthen each other's programs so that girls can be heard. Thank you for being here. And now it is my pleasure to introduce to everyone uh, Alliance for Girls' new director of programs, Holly Joshi. 
Uh, Holly comes to us with an incredible experience, decades of experience centering girls and centering and supporting our most marginalized girls in a variety of contexts from working in the Oakland Police Department as a reformer, as an advocate for young women experiencing child sex trafficking to being the executive director of Missy, motivating, inspiring, and serving sexually exploited youth to getting your doctorate in educational social change leadership um, at St. Mary's to uh, being a researcher and evaluator with the Bright Research Group and now joining Alliance for Girls. We are unbelievably uh, honored to have the experience that you bring from within systems, from without systems as a academic, as a researcher, as a direct service provider. Um, you really understand the full gamut. You know all the tools that it takes to address gender equity and to fight for gender justice holistically. Um, you also come to us as someone who is a member of Alliance for Girls for five years um, and was a champion of our first major policy win as an organization, which was the passing of the sexual harassment policy in Oakland Unified School District that was written by girls and with our member organizations. And doing that work with you, Holly, um, as a leader of the committee that passed that policy, I have been really floored and amazed by your intellect, your ability to connect the dots very quickly, your passion, your genuine deep commitment to this work, your abundance in the way that you approach partnership and other people, um, and you're, you're a joy to work with. <laughs> you know, I often say that we need to dance, we need to laugh in this work, and you always bring joy even while you're working hard. And so I'm so privileged to have not only your experience, but who you are uh, as a person and the incredible way in which you approach, approach this work uh, on our team. It's truly a pleasure and a privilege to work with you. So welcome, Holly. Thank you, Emma. What a warm welcome. I thought I was tired, y'all. It's Friday, it's 3.30, and then I hear Emma speak, and I'm like, oh, no, I'm not tired. I can go <laughs> another 48 hours straight. <laughs> Thank you, Emma, for all, for all of that, that you gave us so much inspiration. It's so good to be here. I see you all, Lizette, Sabrina, Tiffany, Thea. Thank you for being here with us today. What an amazing, amazing time that I am joining an amazing organization. Alliance for Girls brings all of us together, all of us girl champions, all of us experts in the field, uniting us to advocate for and with girls. And as we all know, we are powered by community-based research conducted by and for girls. And that is a powerful approach to the critical change work that is necessary and that we're all consistently engaged in. And I think what's most important about the work that we're all doing together is that we are disrupting the narrative that because as women and girls and gender non-conforming folks and trans folks, that because we've been oppressed, that we're fragile or that we're in need of saving. But what we're doing together and what the Alliance for Girls is committed to do is recognizing all of us in our fullness, recognizing all of us in our complexity and saying very, very loud and clear that we have been victims. We are survivors, we're brilliant, we're resilient, we're tenacious, we don't need saving, we just need space we need voice and we can move change. And I'm so excited to be a part of this organization. I'm so excited to be here today and to learn more about everything that everyone's doing. So thank you again, Emma, for the warm intro. Thanks, Holly. We're, I mean, you know, I'm very personally excited for you to join the team too. And I'm excited to introduce our next speakers, also colleagues on Alliance for Girls team. 
Nakia Dillard, Program Manager of Alliance for Girls, and Halima Barucha, Advocacy Manager at Alliance for Girls. Ooh. Hey everyone, thanks for joining. It's it's so different doing like virtual parties. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying really hard here, um, but I appreciate everyone being on and appreciate the energy that you're bringing um, and all the incredible work that our members have done over this last year. And I'm really excited to share that with you all. Um, so I'll be going through just a couple of slides to just briefly share with you all some of the work that we've done and also gratitude to all the incredible folks from the advocacy committee and our membership who supported and made all of this possible. Um, so one of the things that, you know, and you've heard this from Emma and Holly, who kind of echoed this work around our, our core value, which is centering those impacted as we're creating solutions. And so I'm going to be sharing a little bit about how we've developed our very first um, girls policy agenda platform. It's a Bay Area wide policy platform really focused on closing the gap and understanding what the unique needs of girls and gender expansive youth are. Um, and so we've been working on that. And um, as Emma mentioned, the Together We Rise report had a huge impact on our advocacy work this year. And we're really excited to share the process of how we developed our policy. It's, it's something that um, we don't often see in policy spaces because of the way that the timeline of policy and the way the timeline of trust and relationship and community building are, but we've managed with our partners and with our youth leaders to make it happen. Um, so one of the main things that informed our advocacy this year was the Together We Rise report and also our COVID-19 survey. Um, and if you go to the next slide, I'll share a little bit of some of the pictures and the community engagement that we did to make this happen. Um, so after the release of the Together You Rise report in August of 2019, um, we realized that there were so many issues that girls of color in the Bay Area were experiencing, right, from uh, issues in access to education, uh, safety in community spaces and public transportation, um, you know, issues within the, the resource gap. There are just so many things, right? And that's a sad reality that we've seen in our community that these are long known issues and yet they haven't been addressed. And so when that report came out, we realized there was a lot of different policy um, policy solutions that we could bring, but we wanted to make sure it was continue to be centered by those impacted. Um, and so we started doing town halls. We did one in Santa Clara, we did one in Contra Costa and one in Alameda. And um, some of you all probably attended those town halls. I see some familiar faces. I think that's the first time where I had met Lizette. And we built long partnerships through that process of even doing town halls. and engaging young people in the community, members who are part of the Alliance for Girls Network in the different regions, um, and also general folks in the community who, you know, some of whom I knew, I'm from Santa Clara, so it was really cool to have the Santa Clara Town Hall and some of these pictures. There's a lot of faces that I recognize from high school and from community spaces that I've been a part of. Um, and so we did town halls and we presented the survey um, and the research results and we kind of went over um, what the core themes were and ask community members, like what should we prioritize? Where do we start? Um, what is feeling most pressing in, that, in this current moment? Um, and we're able to identify some of the core issues that we've been working on since then. Um, another really core piece of research that has informed our work more recently is the COVID-19 survey. And just wanna give huge gratitude to our youth researchers who came together in March of this year um, to launch a survey to start identifying what the needs of girls and gender expansive youth um, up to age 24 in California were um, during COVID-19. And so that's another core research that informed our work. Um, and after we did town halls across the Bay Area, we also con convened a coalition um, of member organizations from all over who've been doing advocacy, some who'd never done advocacy, um, and we came together realizing that collective action is really how we're gonna be able to move forward to get policy wins and to make systematic and policy changes happen. Um, and so that group together kind of took all the feedback and the report findings, and we developed a draft of policy briefs, policy memos, things that we thought could help close these gaps. And then we went back a couple of months later to do community report backs to the same areas that we had gone to and shared, you know, here's what we've come up with based on our conversation that we had a couple of months ago. What do you think? What's missing? What do we need to add? What would you change? Um, and so that was a really long process that we engaged in to make sure that as we're doing this work, we're continuing to center those that are most impacted and making sure that this policy work is really driven by our community. Um, and this process has been such a rewarding process for us to be a part of. I'm really honored to have been able to 
um, lead this effort and really grateful for all the relationships and partnerships that we've built throughout this process over this last year. Um, so I want to just give gratitude to all our partners um, and community leaders who've been involved in this work, um, to our advocacy committee, which includes um, the Santa Clara Office of Women's Policy. Um, we've been working together for this whole year doing really incredible partnerships and we'll actually be um, co-hosting a policy briefing um, next week on domestic violence. Um, the Family Violence Law Center, working with Jane, um, Everyone Home, the San Francisco Department of the Status of Women, of course, getting to build relationships with Linnea and Elizabeth and Elise and um, really making sure that this work is reaching different parts of the Bay Area, um, being able to connect with Bay Area Women Against Rape, Girls Inc. of Contra Costa County, which is doing amazing work and really holding it down there, um, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of the Bay Area, um, Vilma from the Women's Building, um, just being able to see, if you haven't been there, I really recommend you go. The, the building is incredible, the space is incredible. Um, but being able to work with that organization and some of the youth leaders that they've been training, the Unity Council, really grateful for Jay's leadership and Jessica's leadership there, um, working with Jocelyn and Esmeralda at Ignite, um, working with Karas, working with Yoali, and being really, really, really grateful for those relationships, you know, being able to make sure that our work is reaching um, South Santa Clara County and that um, we're really making sure that we're reaching different parts of the Bay Area. Um, working with Kamal Preet, that Girl Ventures, um, the Bill Wilson Center Youth Impact Partnership and the YWCA of Silicon Valley. And of course, there's so many more organizations and folks that have been involved throughout the process in helping develop this work um, in supporting us at different points um, by turning out to give public comment or bringing youth leaders into this space. But just wanted to give a huge shout out to everyone who has supported this work and made this possible. We, could have, we couldn't have done this alone. Um, and I'm just so grateful for everyone's partnership. Um, and together, you know, with that being said, we were able to accomplish a couple of things this year that I wanted to share with all of you. Um, things that we're gonna continue to work on, but because of this partnership, we're able to establish the first ever um, Bay Area policy um, with BART to end gender-based violence and sexual harassment on public transportation. Um, it's something that we're very excited about and have been working on with Unity Council, um, with Black Girls Brilliance, with Betty Ono, um, with, and with staff at BART to really develop a comprehensive campaign and policies that are going to work towards reducing and preventing gender-based violence. Um, we're going to be launching the official um, work in March of 2021, which is very, very exciting. With COVID, of course, we had a couple of pivots and shifts, um, but it's been incredible to work on that. And if you're interested in learning more, we're going to have an event this coming Monday that's going to just share more in-depth details and opportunities for folks to get involved um, in that work. Um, and we're really grateful too to everyone who showed up in December when we had our first community meeting with BART officials and then in February to give testimony to pass the BART resolution that enabled us to do this work. Um, and then secondly, we were able to um, work on a proposal for Santa Clara County that's really focused around supporting young moms with stigma-free access to resources in particular childcare, financial aid, and job opportunities. I'm really grateful for all our partners in Santa Clara County, the Office of Women's Policy, YWC of Silicon Valley, Planned Parenthood, Mermonte, Caras, Yoali, um, and so many others who've supported us in really developing a proposal that was presented to the board of supervisors uh, last month and will be going up again in November um, so that we can get final approval for funding to do this work. Um, it's something that we've been working on since December of last year. So it's been a very long process and we're very, very excited and hopeful um, that we'll have a positive outcome in November. Um, and then we've also been working around advocating to close the gaps in access to period products and basic needs in the Bay Area. Um, particularly working in Santa Clara County right now to do a report with the county um, around where the resource gaps are so that we can provide recommendations on closing them. And really grateful to Oakland as well. Oakland Unified was the first school district to provide these um, items um, within the COVID-19 period, of course. And that's something that came out of our COVID-19 survey results um, as a core need for girls and gender expansive youth. And then lastly, you know, just something that I'm really grateful for and doesn't always come out in, in necessarily as like a, an outcome that's tangible, but having an ecosystem of advocates across the area who build trust, who build deep relationships, um, and also having friends, you know, folks that we all 
have kind of built those relationships with each other and can count on each other for support um, and tap on each other when we need help. I think that's been the biggest and most rewarding aspect of this work. The policy wins have been amazing, but knowing that we have this really strong ecosystem of organizations and individual leaders and young people in the community, and we are all um, we're all looped in together and we're all kind of in sync. And I've, I've really appreciated that work. Um, and then lastly, we've been doing a lot of work within the school districts and I'm gonna pass it over to Nakia to share a little bit more about what that has looked like. Um, and we're very excited that today we'll be able to do a, a sneak peek and special reveal of some of the videos that have been created by um, our youth um, within the school district. Awesome, thank you, Halima. If you can go to the next slide. Okay, so I just wanna take an opportunity to just kind of further lift up how some of our young women um, have been leading the way and like really just lift up the Alliance for Girls model um, around like how we make sure that we listen to what girls are telling us, what they need and you know, using research as a tool to then partner with girls and, and girls champions to use that information to advocate for systems change work. And so I just wanna share a few highlights on how we've been able to do that. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? So first I wanna just highlight our amazing partnership with Oakland Unified, the Oakland Unified School District. Many of you may already know, like we have a long standing history of collabor collaboration with them that really just kind of streamed out of our Meeting Girls Needs Initiative model, um, really just trying to understand like what were girls experiencing, what were they they, they needing? Um, and we did like a, a report, Volume Girls Voices report to really understand what, what were the issues coming up. And one of those key um, issues that we learned that girls were experiencing sexual harassment on a regular basis and that girls didn't really know in OUSD about their policy and so, um, like what has been mentioned already, like our member organizations like MISTI and Equal, uh, Equal Rights Advocates, um, uh, various different community um, organizations and girls and girls champions really came together to organize the passing of a modified um, sexual misconduct policy in OUSD in 2017. So that was a major win for us, but we knew that we couldn't stop there. So after that, girls wanted to create, they piloted a training to educate their peers about the policy. And since then, um, it, last year, different members came together to really update that policy and translate that policy into a series of five videos where girls can not only learn about the policy itself, but also learn about about who are the black women and the women of color leading the way in making sexual harassment a crime? Um, what are the resources that girls can access if they want to report sexual harassment or if they don't want to report? Also, what are some of the definitions and terms and various different other things that the, the videos kind of portray? And so we're going to show a sneak peek of one of the videos in just a moment. But really, this is just lifting up how we not only just do research and ask girls what, what they need, but we partner with them and then we circle back to them and to create solutions so that we can take that and ideally implement it into these institutions to bring about change. And so um, we're currently in the process of now, like how do we implement these videos and really create a toolkit so that um, OUSD students and other students can really learn about their rights and really learn about the policy and again about the history of um, Black women and women of color leading in the way. And so I just wanted to set up. And so we're going to show a sneak peek of one of the videos um, right now. Hi, my name is Diamond. Hi, my name is Dariana. In this video, we're going to tell you about OUSD's sexual misconduct policy and what led to the passing of the policy. OUSD sexual misconduct policy. OUSD is a national model for a strong sexual misconduct policy for grades K through 12. It adds to student, federal, and state protections. 
It was developed as a result of Alliance for Girls Meeting Girls Needs Initiative, MGNI. Meeting Girls Needs Initiative, MGNI. It creates supportive, safer, and inclusive school system for girls. Elevates girls' voices and experiences in the school system. It also develops and enhances solutions to meeting girls' needs. Through MGNI, OUSD enacted a policy that was designed by and for girls of color. We listened to girls. We did research with girls in OUSD. We listened to them. Girls told us that they were being sexually harassed and wanted people, especially adults, to intervene when incidents happened. That's why we drafted and enacted a sexual misconduct policy for OUSD and made this video. OUSD's Modified Sexual Harassment Policy passes. In 2016, Girl Leaders and Community Partners enacted a new policy for schools based on what girls said in the research. Here's a picture of the policy the day it got passed. OUSD policy has been used as the model for the nation. What makes it unique is prioritizes student's psychological and emotional health. It applies the affirmative consent standard in instances of sexual violence in school. Requires the district to take action on a school-wide level. Ensures the victims have a voice in how their complaints are resolved. Describes the use of restorative justice as a disciplinary alternative. Awesome. So those were just two out of five of the amazing OUSD students who um, starred in the in one of the videos. There, there's five videos total. And we've done a, a lot of work with OUSD and we're still doing work with them. And so I just wanted to highlight the policy work on the sexual misconduct policy. And so you'll, you'll likely hear more about that soon. Um, Caitlin, can you go to the next slide, please? And lastly, I'll, I'll just reemphasize um, our Young Women's Leadership Board has been um, leading the way through our COVID-19 um, youth-led participatory action research project. Um, we, back in March, like Kalima said earlier, we really checked in with girls to see how they were doing um, you know, cause we care and <laughs> like, you know, how are you doing during COVID? We partnered with our girl leaders to um, provide them a series of training and like data analysis and coding. And they really took initiative to lead the way of um, trying to understand what are girls experiencing right now during COVID and so that we don't forget about that. So we keep um, hold tight to making sure we're continuing to listen to girls and then to utilize that information to advocate for more resources um, for them. Like Halima said with the period product and other things that we're learning as well. And so those girl leaders um, also put on their own town hall presentation in July, um, sharing their analysis of the data and in partnership with Black Girls Brilliance who did an amazing job of talking about their personal stories. And um, as of this month, we're actually going to hire those young women and an additional uh, set of young women to continue on this advocacy work in um, systems change work with us. And so if you want to learn more about that, um, definitely reach out to me. I'm happy to share, but I'm going to pass it on for the sake of time. I'm going to pass it back to Halima. Thank you, Nakia, for sharing that. I mean, this work, um, it, it's just amazing to see it all come to fruition. I'm really excited to share and close out this section with a little bit around what our vision looks like. And part of why I want to share this vision is just to make sure that we're centering 
um, our, in, our dreams for the future. I think a lot of times you get caught up to in like the current realities and limitations of the systems that we're navigating and the challenges that we're dealing with. And I think especially right now, like we need to keep our eye on the vision and really think about what the next 10, 20, 30, 50 years are gonna look like. Um, and so for us, we've really been thinking about that. And we'll also be doing um, a series of events in November around community visions. Um, but for now, I wanted to just share a brief couple of things that we've been thinking about. So one of them has just really been um, around how do we create systems, uh, coordinated systems of support and empowerment for girls and gender expansive youth, right? Making sure that all these systems are working together and they're system, systems of empowerment, not systems of oppression making sure that our girls and gender expansive youth are safe in their homes and their schools in public spaces on public transportation um, and really imagining what radical visions of safety can look like. Uh, making sure that our girls and gender expansive youth have access to resources and especially with COVID-19, um, we wanna make sure those resource gaps are closed at the county level, at the school district level, at the state level, at every level possible, um, that they have access to what they need so that they can thrive um, and lastly, making sure that young people are at the center and they're able to make decisions about um, issues that are impacting them. So this includes making sure youth-led research is part of all the work that we're doing, making sure that there's girls advisory boards or decision-making boards at different government spaces and convenings so that decisions are not being made for, but this is, decisions are being made with um, those that are impacted. Um, and so I just want to leave you all with that. And of course, would love to hear too in the chat what your vision for the future looks like. And with that being said, we're gonna take a quick music break with our DJ um, and just jam out to some tunes before we have our first youth keynote speaker up.
to have the DJ at a virtual event. It's our first time doing this, so um, it's really exciting. Um, so as we transition, I'm really excited and honored to introduce Sabrina McFarland, who is our youth keynote speaker for this event. Um, and thank you to the San Francisco Department of the Status of Women for um, telling me about Sabrina and connecting us. I was like, how did I not know about Sabrina sooner? Um, so Sabrina is a 20 year old first generation college student going on to her sophomore year at the Bernard College of Columbia University. She was born and raised in San Francisco and in 2019 she was awarded the Princeton Prize in Race Relations for the work that she did on making and teaching curriculums about intersectionality and post traumatic slave syndrome to high school high schoolers. She's also the 2019 2020 National Youth of the Year for the Boys and Girls Club of America. She's an activist, slam poet, writer, and public speaker. And we're really excited for her to not only speak, but also share a poem for us today. So I'm gonna hand it off to Sabrina, take it away. Hello, uh, you guys can hear me good? Yes. Okay, um, well, thank you for having me. And I just wanted to start off with a poem. Um, it's my best way to start to warm up people, so. And I find myself here today, and ain't that something to celebrate? I find myself and peace within the chaos. Arms grasp one another, hands interlock, energy vibrates. A ray of light glistens off of my brown skin and I soak it in and let the light breeze trail me. And I follow the trail, the chant continues, power to the people, power to the people power to the people. Our words become the tools and help us disband our pain. I don't know their names, but I find comfort in the presence of strangers who recognize my humanity. And I won't let my pain be my defining characteristic, but be the outline of my beauty and teach me how to relish in my happiness. The bright light shines in my eyes. I arise with the sun, the, the chirps of the birds, the sound expands across the land, another day. In the immense pulse of the blood running through my veins, the pounding of our feet. Some are headed to the schoolhouse, mouths open wide, smiles coming from the inside. A spectrum of colorful hands join in prayer. The darkness does not come here. We are the light, we shine so bright. I rest with no worries, this is peace. So I wrote this poem to encapsulate the feeling of serenity. Um, and I think the world, it like our norm for the world so often is living in the constant state of being held down by oppressive states um, that we forget that there is a place of just pure tranquility and that it is not imaginary and that it is possible. Um, so happy day of the girl. And more than ever, I think it is important to acknowledge and center our fellow sisters and gender expansive folks. 
Our girlhood is beyond what society tries to tell us it is. Tries to tell us it is. Alliance for Girls has been on the ground doing the work. And I wanna start off by recognizing that gender is a social construct. And so often I have questions the merits of my own womanness as historically femininity was never created in mind with ever seeing a black woman or a queer woman as a woman. Um, so my own personal journey taught me to define girlhood and woman is through my own eyes. And this may seem small, but most of my clothes I buy are in the men's section. And I recognize that in itself, it doesn't make me any less of a girl, doesn't make me any less of a woman. And I just want to say to all the tomboys, all the mass queer girls, the non-conforming girls, to the trans girls and fellow sisters, and to my gender expansive folks, that this is your day just as much as anyone else's and don't ever let someone define your identity for you. You are beautiful, you are magic, and you are most of all valued. Unfortunately, it is our shared struggles that merely help bring us together and advocate and fight for a better world for one another, um, which is where love is in its purest form can be found. So gender-based violence on public transportation has been a fight for Alliance for Girls and they have been dealing with it head on. And I know every single girl that I has faced some sort of harassment on public transportation, including myself. Um, and it just tells you how prevalent it really is. And often as girls, we are made to feel small and too often silenced or told to be quiet about what we need. And I say no more and everyone on this call today also says no more. Um, and so as a young black girl, I had dreams of being my own boss. And it wasn't too long after that, that I was told that I was too bossy and I've been told that I was too talkative and minimized myself, but I had an older woman who was a mentor of mine tell me to embrace my voice. And since then I haven't stopped and I found power in using my voice to speak up when those I love did not have it in them to do so. And I found true liberation when I found my voice and was able to see the impact of it. Use your voice and speak truth to power. It is needed. Um, and I've never met a guy who's been called bossy or told that he was too talkative. Um, and Alliance for Girls is an organization that strives to center these voices of some of the most vulnerable populations, women and gender expansive folks, girls of color. And they've been working tirelessly along with the youth involved about bringing about today. And as long as we collectively push back and speak up, I believe that change will follow. And it is imperative that we do not lose hope. And it may seem kind of corny, but true revolution comes from joy. Um, when we can gather in celebration, it is a revolution. Oppressive states thrive off of the ability to strip us of our humanity, the ability to strip us of our happiness and for us to not have hope. And so we must practice doing just that. And so I look for joy in the many things that I try, like I usually take for granted. So going on walks, listening to music, singing in the shower or writing poetry or just watching my favorite show. And a way that I try to take back control sometimes is by actively not doing work, which brings me joy. And I know, and I'm not saying don't do your homework, um, but there is power in breaking away from social norms that are expected of us all the time. Capitalism shoves down our throats the idea of productivity. And naturally as people, working all the time is not innate to us. And so take breaks and some days choose joy over your ability to produce labor and choose it without feeling guilty. Um, and so I dream of a world where gender-based violence is not even a phrase in our vocabulary because everyone can feel safe in public. Um, we all deserve to feel safe mentally, emotionally, and physically deserve to be listened to and our needs must be met by any means necessary and is it is not imaginary to envision a world where we are safe and I just want to say that it's not imaginary and it's not bizarre to think that we can have a world where we can be safe um, in a world where any person is subjugated to oppression um, so maintain your peace and take care of your mental health first always um, as women, as girls, as gender experienced folks, we put everyone before ourselves. And it is important to remember to put ourselves first sometimes because you truly can't pour 
into others from an empty glass. Um, so go out into the world and be fearless and uplift one another. And let this celebration be our call to action because we have come a long way and yet have so much more to go. But I have no doubt that we will get there someday. So thank you. Thank you so much, Sabrina. I'm like, I don't even know what to say. That was everything that I needed to hear right now, especially like around rest and how important I think, especially in this particular moment, we have 50 million things happening and it's like, go, go, go. But rest is actually such an important form of resistance and centering our joy um, as a way to remind ourselves like what we're really here for. Um, and also to step back from work to all the nonprofit people, like we needed to hear that. Thank you so much, Sabrina, you're incredible. Thank you. Um, and now I'm really excited to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Shufu Myri, who is the Vice President of the San Francisco Commission on the Status of Women. Dr. Shufu is a clinical psychologist specializing in adolescents and their families. She's done incredible work um, with the status of, Department of the Status of Women, um, and she is the chair of the board of directors of the National Iranian American Council, which is the largest grassroots organization focused on issues of discrimination and the advancements of, of peace. Um, she's had many incredible accomplishments. I won't list them all now. I will let her, um, her work speak for, for itself. So I'm uh, really excited to introduce Dr. Shuku. Thank you so much. Thank you for that warm introduction. That was really kind. Um, I want to also just start off by saying thank you to the co-host, the Alliance for Girls. I am so honored to join you all in celebrating Day of the Girl. Um, I'm Shaku Miri. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm also a mom and I'm vice president of the San Francisco Commission on the Status of Women. The department is really dedicated to advocating and advancing for the rights of women and girls throughout San Francisco. We are so proud to be members of the Alliance and part of the advocacy committee working to ensure girls safety from gender-based violence, to increase girls' access to resources, and to enhance awareness and understanding of the unique needs of girls. The work that we all do, that you all do, is more critical now than ever before. We're facing tremendous challenges of this moment. The pandemic has exposed and exploited existing health, economic, and social disparities. We're reckoning with the ongoing horrors of racism, of xenophobia, an economic downturn, income inequality, housing insecurity, social isolation, a caretaking crisis. It goes on and on. And these challenges are not only felt at the national level, they're felt right here at home in our own communities. And one thing I know from my clinical work is that girls are in the eye and center of the storm. These issues are huge and they're heavy, but I also know that girls are capable and resilient. And as someone who works with girls to help them in some of their most difficult personal moments, I have personally seen the strength of girls to reach within, to not only improve their own lives, but to lift up their communities and lift up those around them. At the Commission and at the Department on the Status of Women, we work at the systems level to remove obstacles to equality, opportunity, and advancement because we believe in the vision that girls have for their lives and we trust that girls have the resolve to go after it. We're working at the department to expand employment opportunities for girls and women in workforce training programs because we think every door should be open to every girl. And when she gets a job, she should be paid exactly what the guy sitting next to her is getting paid. So we're also tackling the gender wage gap by getting rid of the question about what you previously earned and educating businesses about what else they can do to close the gender pay gap. We're also working to make San Francisco more family friendly so that parents can take paid time off when their daughters are born, when their daughters are sick or when their daughters have kids of their own. When there's violence in a home or in a relationship, which is still way too often, we are there with a lifeline of support services. Our gender-based violence grants program funds community-based organizations with millions of dollars to provide critical intervention and prevention services. We try and address domestic violence, assault, stalking, and human trafficking at all levels. And we know times of stress and crisis, like where we are currently, these times increase the risk of danger for girls. And so we've quickly adapted to meet the needs of our partner agencies during COVID so they can continue to be there for women and girls. We've made sure that providers have access to PPE. We've advocated for more safe spaces for girls experiencing violence across our city. And for girls who don't have a home or who are in foster care, 
we are working really hard to put into place a new continuum of care for San Francisco youth, especially those who are at risk of exploitation. We have 10 partners in the SF SOL Collaborative and we're creating a team to meet young people where they are and get them the support they need whenever they need it. We're also proud to empower youth to be leaders in the process with a drop-in center designed by youth for youth with services, resources, and opportunities. So here's what I wanna say. No matter how dark it may feel right now, I want you to remember that as girls, you are a light. You are our light in the darkness. Your brilliance, your capability, your strength, they are endless. Your leadership gives me hope, gives us all hope. And your leadership really serves to fuel the work that we all do. I want you to breathe. I want you to take care of your minds and your bodies. And I want you to know that there is a powerful and dedicated community that we love you, that we value you, and that we will fight for you. I wanna thank you all for joining today as we celebrate girls and we celebrate the work that this vital community does to create a safer, a more supportive, and a more just and equitable community for all of us. I'm so honored to be with you today at the Day of the Girl. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Dr. Myrie, for sharing that, for reminding us to take a breath and take a moment. I'm really excited to have you today for the celebration of Day of the Girl. Um, and now I'll be introducing our last speaker, Lizette Diaz, who is the Outreach Specialist at Yoali, which is a youth advocacy organization based at South Santa Clara County. Um, we've had the pleasure of working together and getting to know each other over this last year, all the way back from our very first town hall in Santa Clara, um, and, have, and also being able to work on our work um, around supporting young moms in Santa Clara County. Um, Lisa is someone who centers community, youth, and social justice values in her work. She's an amazing leader and we're so honored to have her speak at this event today. Hello everybody. Um, as Lima said, my name is Lisette Sochiquetzali Diaz. I am currently with Yo Ali and I am very, very grateful, humbled, and um, thankful for everybody here today um, coming together to celebrate young girls. Um, it is my pleasure to work with AFG with uh, to have met Halima. Um, she was like the sun coming through the clouds. Um, it's especially here in South County where um, our resources sometimes are derived from the actual services that our youth need. Um, and their voice has um, is usually shunned and it's usually pushed aside for other um, services that in reality, we need to focus more on prevention and on what our youth are asking for rather than intervention and intervention and consequences and everything. So um, with that, um, like Halima said, we have um, worked together for past year now um, with uh, doing town halls, getting, getting the girls to come out and express what they feel, um, how they feel coming into these spaces where um, professionalism has to be like the all, where they don't understand the language that others are speaking, um, where they are not sure if they say something, are they gonna get in trouble? Are they gonna understand what they're trying to, to say? Um, and it is, it's been a great experience. Um, a lot of our young moms and of our youth um, have come out in support, they um, speak, they um, have let all of us know, hey, you know, this is what we need. Um, we need more services. Um, we lack services for young moms. You know, there's so many requirements out there with other agencies, with other services that go, come through the county or through come, come through the state. Um, and we can't access them just because of one limitation. Um, so it's just, it's, it's been awesome to be able to um, get this win and to get more resources for young moms here in Santa Clara County, especially down in South County where sometimes, um, not that the resources aren't there, but sometimes it's insufficient, right? Um, so our disparity rates are enormously different rather than other, other counties and even within our own county and different zip codes. Um, so, you know, it's my experience working with AFG this past year, you know, it's, it's been very uplifting being in spaces where it's all of us women, right? Women working for women, women advocating for women, for young girls, for uh, the youth, you know, getting, getting to know others, getting to be in spaces where 
we can talk amongst each other um, and get to know each other and because we have the same goals and we're fighting for the same, um, for this, not per se for the same side, but we're able to express ourselves in a different, uh, in a different way when sometimes before I, and this is my personal experience, but sometimes it was like, okay, well, this is inappropriate. Or um, I would be told, uh, you know, you have to be, uh, you have to dress a certain way, or you have to do your hair a certain way because you have to look presentable. And um, just leaving those spaces and now being able to, to share um, space with all of you, um, with Halima, you know, women, uh, the Office of Women's Policy, we've been to, um, you know, the county and just talking to everybody and they're like, no, you know what, we're going to say the way that, you know, we're going to say everything that we have to say, we're going to speak from the heart and we're going to let them know exactly what's going on. Um, we don't have to say, hey, you know what, what are you doing? What are you doing in, a, in your district? You know, keep getting people to be accountable for their districts, for their actions, um, getting accountability for our community, um, for the people that are hurting. Um, so that has been such a great experience. Um, to me, it's like a big sisterhood, right? AFG. It's like, we all come together. I know I've reached out to Halima. Hey, this is going on in our school district. Who do I reach out to? And she's like, yeah, I know someone. And this same thing happened here. And, you know, just that network and that communication and that, that space where I can go, hey, you know, we need support here. You know, we had a great win here. Um, in South Santa Clara County um, with our digital uh, divide, our migrant kids weren't receiving school services because there was no internet access. Um, so, you know, we, reach, we reached out, you know, Judge Lucero came through. Um, a, lot of our, a lot of our parents that were getting truancy and they were gonna be sent to court, you know, those letters have gone out. Um, they're actually made a program where kids can come to school and access the computers. Um, if they're really at risk and really need um, the help. Um, so there's a lot of stuff, especially with um, like our, the drafts that we, the, we were working on the referrals for young moms to get more services. We're actually be, be able to get up and running, especially with um, also with the, for uh, period products, um, getting that knowledge out there more. Um, you know, I'm very thankful thankful and very humble to continue this work and to be able to be here celebrating right because it's always this meeting the next meeting it's always another issue and where do we support and where do we go but it's nice to come and be able to listen to music and be able to listen to all these beautiful speakers and these poems and be able to come together and you know share this space to celebrate you know celebrate all these wins that everybody's coming in all across um california and other states so thank you, especially in these times, um, you know, thank you. And um, I'm great and it's it's awesome. I'm very, very excited to continue this work um, and hopefully get more wins. Thank you, Lizette. You're just an incredible partner for us to have in the work that we've been doing. So um, the feeling is absolutely mutual. Thank you so much. Um, so we're now going to go into another dance party break. So excited for Mar to take it away. Thank <laughs> you. 
on the decks nice thank you that was awesome so for i'm i'm excited to introduce our next speaker lyle jones 
Lael is, let me just make sure this guy's here. Lael is a young black Mexican indigenous woman from Oakland, California. She is a spoken word poet. Her poems are often based around how she experiences the world as a young woman of color. She's currently enrolled as a full-time student at Berkeley City College, where she majors in education. She's also a student at the Institute for Emerging Visionaries, where she is learning the ins and outs of humanitarian work. Lael plans on making the world more just and fair for all humans and hopes to leave it in a better shape than she found it. Please join me in welcoming Lael. Thank you, Lael, take it away. And forgive me, I haven't performed uh, in about seven months now. <laughs> Community, come unity, come see what I see. Come create the world we wish to be. We don't have to wait for it, even if it's what we've been told. If another world is possible, it begins with you and me. Community, come unity, come to the place where kindness is a currency and capitalism is a diagnosable disease. Community, come unity where we hold each other, where we hold each other accountable to be real, to be ourselves, to, to be what we tell ourselves we need. Come, let us honor the land, give reverence to our mama earth. Let us marvel in her wonder. Let us rejoice in her beauty. Protect her like she's all we've got. Community, come unity. No longer eat from the soil's remnants of war and genocide. Free yourself of the things that no longer serve you, like police, like corporate health systems, like complacency. Replace the ideas of safety with of love, the love of us. Let us remember what it is like to be vulnerable, what it is like to see our mistakes as lessons. Let us remember what it is like to be community. Community, come unity. Come with me and see what is, is possible when we value generational knowledge. Where young people are experts and consult, while elders are revered teachers of sacred ways. Community, community. Come unity, come value black bodies, come value fat bodies, come value brown bodies, come value, come values, come on now values. Show up, show out, come through allyship, come through unconditional love. A better world is around the corner. It's a bike ride away on a Navajo road, down a clean coast community, come unity. Are you down? Ready to tell misogyny to kick rocks? Ready to respect trans minds, bodies, hearts, and spirits? Don't forget to open up the jails and detention centers. Tell them to hurry up. We have things to do. No more exploitation of youth desperation for a better world tomorrow. It's time for our better future to show up now. We are capable of creating the impossible community. Come get this good unity. Come eat from the table of togetherness. Drink from the pitchers of peace. Get down on our mama's wisdoms and our dad and our uncles get right pie. Unapologetically immerse yourself in what we know we deserve. Embrace it like our lives depend on it because it does, because we do. Put on your Sunday best or your Saturday afternoon overalls. Come as you are, however you come. Come, come unity, because we can't wait for you any longer. Thank you. Ooh, wow, oh my gosh. I wish we could all wow. be in person. That was amazing. <laughs> that was incredible. Thank you so much, Lyle. Thank you for your powerful, your beautiful and truth-telling words um, and just for being who you are. 
um, you bring so much light. We, we ha also had you, we had the privilege of having you speak at our members meeting in February. And so I'm so glad we were able to bring you back for just more of your wisdom. So thank you so much. So with that, um, I am going to wrap us up. It is 4.50 um, and it was really fun to, to be able to, you know, try out party over Zoom. It's kind of the best thing we have right now. Um, and before we close, um, I just wanted to share some upcoming events that we have. Um, and so on Monday, um, you heard a bit about this from Halima and from Nakia. Um, you know, we've been working on a campaign to really end gender-based violence on public transit. And so on Monday, we'll be live streaming an update on where that work is at. Um, we'll be featuring some speakers and some partners that have been doing this work, including Latifa Simon, the president of BART Board, and a couple of other community organizations that have been a key part of this work, including Black Girls Brilliance and the Unity Council. So that's happening on Monday from 3.45 to, 3.45 to 5 p.m. And then on Thursday, we'll be hosting co-hosting a virtual policy briefing on shaping gender-based violence prevention policy amid COVID-19. Um, and that is in collaboration with uh, the Center for, I'm sorry, the Coalition to End Domestic Violence. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm like tired and on a Friday, but um, for the California Coalition to End Domestic Violence, um, the Office of Women's Policy for Santa Clara County and the Office of Gender-Based Violence Prevention also as a part of Santa Clara County. So we're, we really hope to see you at these upcoming events. And finally, uh, before we close, you know, as we've seen through our speakers, through the youth who are part of today's conversation and, and party, you know, we are the ones we have been waiting for. Um, we are making change despite all of the crises that are going on. Um, we continue to lead and we continue to push. And that is because of our community, all of you, our youth, and those who came before us. Um, and so with that, we just want to thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or want to be a part of this work and this movement, um, please reach out to my colleague Kalima. Her email address is on the screen. Thank you so, so much for joining us today to kick off the end of the week. And I hope you all have a wonderful, joyful weekend. And we will end with some more amazing music from Chulita Vinyl Club. <laughs> Thank you.